everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tier Studio. Today I have another art journal page for you. Guess what? It's art journaling every day in October 2021. Myself and Peg Robinson have an art community on Facebook called Art Joy of Sharing, and this is a challenge from that group for everyone, anyone who wants to join. If you haven't joined the group yet and you're on Facebook, go down below the video, click on the link and ask to join the group. We have different challenges throughout the year in there as well as just lots of great people sharing their art and it's a, a fun and safe space to join where you will not be criticized or um, sold at. And so we, we invite you to join and we love our community of great people who are sharing what they're doing in their creative lives. So this challenge is called hashtag AJOS Peculiar Persona. And this year for our daily art journaling month, we are doing characters in our in our pages. And the prompts are all names and you can get a hint from uh, the name, who the character might be, and then create it in any way. Is it collage? Is it drawing? Is it um, using clip art. Uh, we did provide some royalty free uh, little pages in the group that you can use, you can cut out and use as you want to. And you can just make up stories in your head about who these characters are and then create them on your pages. It's a, a great way to get an idea for something to do. Maybe you can look up on Google the names or maybe you can look for poetry or quotes. I mean, it's it's all kinds of fun to do this in your art journal. So today's prompt is Netta Newtman. And Netta sounds like a female to me, that name. Um, I, I, you know, it just, you, you interpret the prompt the way you want to. And for me, Netta sounds like a female. So the first thing I did on my page, as you saw, was to do a bunch of uh, background collage with different gel prints and painted papers. I I wanted a subtle green addition to the background because it was looking a little bit too yellowy. So I decided to do a little real, really um, subtle stenciling in the background after I put all my collage down and I had these new stencils from Stencil Gold Products, um, a capitals and lowercase letters. They kind of look like typewriter letters and I thought they were cool. I thought that was something that I needed in my life from Stencil Girl, more stencils because I don't already have enough. And I thought letters, I, just, I really like to add like text and graphic letters and numbers to my art. I, I think they're familiar, yet they are a form of mark making. And so I decided to just use a little uh, stencil brush and some, some uh, archival ink in the background and just put the letters for the name Netta Newtman in the background. It doesn't, you can't like it's not in your face like oh my gosh you could read it you know it's it's just for the background but it just adds something that appeals to me to have letters letters and numbers just I think they're cool and there's lots of ways you can add them as marks speaking of mark making if you're interested in taking a mark making and stamping class we have one coming up in November and it will be $25 we'll put you in a Facebook group and then we have uh, live streams um, in the group and the next class coming on November 6th is all about mark making and stamping. People ask for a stamping class but we thought that that was pretty I mean how much can, can you really do four classes in a month about stamping? I mean you could you could but it just I don't know we, we thought because we're mixed media collage artists and we do a lot of mark making that we would talk about that as well. Um, so the next thing I did, oh, and by the way, if you want to sign up for that class, I think the registration, I think the registration is online. It's at Peg, uh, it's at Peg's website, which I will put the link down below because I don't want to quote it wrong here. 
And I'm not sure I remember if it's Peg A. Robinson or Peg Robinson or something. But anyway, she has a website. You can sign up for the class, pay the money, and then we'll put you in the group. For And it, like I said, it starts on November 6th. We're basically doing a, a one-month-long class quarterly all throughout the year. Some people have already joined in the premier membership at the beginning when we did the gel printing class, but that one's over and now we're doing mark making and stamping or stamping and mark making or some combination of those. Um, so the next thing I did was to draw a newt because newtman uh, sounded like that should be a newt. Um, there's lots of different types of newts. Newts are our little uh, lizard-like character. And I was looking at pictures of newts, and I decided that the most interesting one, and the one that actually lives in my neck of the woods, <laughs> neck of the saguaro woods, <laughs> is the banded tiger newt. And that's a pretty interesting looking one. It has these... Um, kind of like stripes or bands. That's probably why it's called that. And I thought that it would be fun to draw one of those into my art journal. However, I did not want it. I want to make a character and not like, I'm not trying to go for realism here. Um, I mean, it's, it's, you can tell it's a newt, right? I drew a newt, but it doesn't have to be newt colors. The banded uh, tiger nude is kind of browns and gold type colors with a little bit of uh, iridescent scales but mine's Netta Newtman so Netta is all about being girly and so the, the base color I started with was a light magenta acrylic paint and I painted the whole uh, shape that color and then I'm going to go back in with some purple and you might ask yourself, why did I pick these colors? Well, for one thing, they're girly, kind of girly, you know, pink and purple. We are in society conditioned to believe that those are girly colors. And then um, also the red-purple is the opposing color on the color wheel to this uh, green-yellow, yellow-green type color that's predominantly in the background. So that gives you a contrast of, of the complementary color straight across the wheel from each other, which makes that newt really stand out from the background. If I had made it the colors that the newt is, it would just blend in and you wouldn't necessarily see it. So there's, there's multiple reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, I do think about color a lot, color, color is my jam. <laughs> and so I think about it a lot. I do have a color wheel on my desk at all times that I can look at if I can't remember what the complementary colors are or what the triad or the, or the, the quad or whatever is, I can look at that. And I would recommend that if you don't have one, you should get one because it really helps out with your color, color theory. It's a lot to remember. You know, it's a lot to, a lot to remember. And I guess eventually it does get ingrained into you and you don't even think about it anymore. But, um, yeah. So I colored in the bandy stripe things, uh, with the purple, and then I got out some titanium white and I mixed it with the pink and added a little bit of light pink highlight across the top. And then also a little bit of blended purpley, uh, highlights onto the, the bands to make it look more dimensional. So highlights and shadows, always a thing. I should probably teach a class called highlights and shadows since I think about it so much. <laughs> and then everybody, everybody be like, oh, she's going to do hair. <laughs> she's going to do hair and makeup. <laughs> they'd all sign up and then they'd be super disappointed when it was an art class. But anyway, that's hilarious. All right, so then I let this thing dry. I had to go do some other things, and so I just left it. Um, and it, when I came back, it was completely dry. The uh, liquid Liquitex matte medium underneath the pages made the, I mean, the, the collage parts made the page curl a little bit as it dried. So I had to, like, push the book and curl the pages back. You can still see that one still wants to to curl up a little bit but of course this is just a book it's going to get shut when the book is done it'll go up on the shelf and maybe once a year I get it out and look at it so 
art journaling is not like you're trying to make something for the Louvre. You're just, you know, you're making pages, you're, you're stretching your creativity, you're practicing your skills, and you are thinking about things, maybe making up stories, maybe putting down things that are bothering you and you just want to get them out. And so you put them on the page. Um, of course, this month we're making up stories and characters. So then I did some Posca pen work. I got some Posca pens out, um, touched up a little bit of the paint, <clears throat> and uh, did white around the stripes to make them more interesting, and then um, black illustration lines around my character. Touching up the eyeballs, I made the eyeballs yellow with like a slit, because I think that's what lizard eyes look like. I'm not exactly sure, but I think so. I think they have like a slit for a pupil instead of a round iris and pupil. So then I wanted to make it into a character. It's Even though it's pink and purple, maybe somewhere in the world there is a lizard that is pink and purple. There probably is. So um, <laughs> there's a lot of reptiles. I know there's definitely a red one of these, a newt that is called a fire belly or something like that That's that was red. Um, because I definitely looked at them, but I wanted to make it into a cute little character. So I decided that Netta Newtman needed a hat and on our collage sheets that we put in the group, um, there's, a, there's some hats. And so I got this hat and put it on her head. And then um, there was also on Peg's sheet, she actually scanned and printed out some 3D flowers. They're, you know, they, they're very real, Look, or, I mean, real as in the silk flowers that you might use in your art. I didn't think about doing that. Something three-dimensional scanned and now becomes, you know, one dimension, but yet still looks three-dimensional. So I cut out those little flowers that would have been little silk flowers. Um, I could have actually got some silk flowers, but then that just makes the pages in the book more bulky and makes the whole book more bulky and hard to close. So I gave her like a little flower skirt made out of those little pink flowers that I cut out. I'm changing the colors of the hat band and the flower on the hat and uh, giving it illustration lines because I want it to match. So it's got a purple hat band and a pink flower. And then of course, white highlights with the white Posca pin like you do, because I do. <laughs> Adding some centers to those little flowers. Um, I considered getting some stick-on pearls or something, but I was just too tired to get out something else. So I just did it with pins instead. <laughs> it's more fun to get all those little things and glue them on, but I just, you know, a, a page and video every day, particularly the video editing part of it, is tricky. It's a lot of work. So I wanted to just be done with this page and move on to the next one. Have to I have to work a little bit ahead because otherwise who knows might what might happen in my crazy stressful life. <laughs> so there's Netta Newtman. She's super cute, little pink newt. But I did I decided I did want to put something else up on the top of the page and I thought about maybe a quote or something, but I decided that her name is just really fun to say. Netta Newman, Netta Newman, Netta Newman. It's just fun to say. So I decided to just put that. And I had this little, um, you know how when you're using napkins in your art, you're collaging with napkins, they have multiple ply and you pull apart those back um, layers so that you just have the top printed layer to do your collage with. Well, this is one of the back pieces and it just happened I used a napkin the other day and something and it just happened to be on the floor and I grabbed it and I got some letters uh, letter stamps and some of my new archival tiny ink pads that one is a uh, vintage photo I think and then this one is what is it uh, squeezed grapes or something like that they're they're the the Tim Holtz colors the distress colors only made into archival ink. Archival ink is better for doing mixed media because it doesn't smear or run once it's dry, unless you put alcohol or something on it. So 
Um, I stamped with two different stamp sets. These are discontinued stamps. You could probably find them on eBay, uh, but you know, there's lots of alphabet stamps out there. You don't need to stick with the ones that I have from, you know, 20 years ago from Stampin' Up. Just it's what I have. I'm not going to get rid of them because I can use them, right? But they are definitely not available anymore as far as their their recent catalogs, you know, because they Stampin' Up constantly discontinues things. It's that part of their business model. One of the reasons I stopped being a demonstrator is because I got tired of buying the new stuff all the time when I had something from before that was just as interesting and it just, you know, for, for someone who's demonstrating, you gotta always have the new stuff and it just, it got tiresome. So, Netta, Netta Newman. <clears throat> I also wrote um, the hashtag AGOS Peculiar Persona, which is our um, hashtag that you can use to find all the artwork that's out there on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we'll see what people are doing with these fun word um, name prompts. I also add a few little highlights and things like that, but I'm mostly done with this page. I hope you enjoyed this one as well as all the ones I've been doing all month. You can search that has hashtag or look for um, our, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> Uh, playlist. There we go. There's a playlist for these. Um, you can just watch them one after the other if you want to. We're getting, we're getting a quarter of the way, I guess, through the month. If you have enjoyed this, please remember to give me a thumbs up and to leave a comment or question below if you have one. And to subscribe, turn on your notification bells. That's that little bell thing that if you turn it on, it looks like it's ringing. And of course, you can share these or come join the group. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.